Right, <coughs> good evening everybody. Welcome to the stream, to the studio this evening. Everything's now set up, I think. Getting used to this new setup. Excuse me while well, I have this look. Lovely drink of cold water. So I'll get out the, um, the locomotive. We'll continue. We'll finish the um, the, the dark grey smoke. I uh, got some light grey out last night to uh, to thread the needle. Um, to do some sort of smoke and steam mixed, and then we'll put some white in for some steam. And then background. Fear Reaper 7, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Uh, lovely cold water with ice cubes. And that's fizzy water as well, which I like, so it's um, one of my favourite drinks. So I trust you are doing well today, Fear Reaper. Have you um, been more successful with your uh, pepper craft or? Have you decided to give up on it? Okay, right. <clears throat> One, two, three. Uh, <coughs> oh dear, I need that drink and I've just drunk it all. Just had a pizza and um, has to make me um, want to have a drink afterwards. I'm doing very well, thank you, uh, Fear Reaper. A little bit tired, been out today. We've been up to uh, Doncaster, to the Doncaster Wild, Wild Life, Wildlife Park. Yeah, hmm, I'm trying to think what it's called. It's a wild, well anyway, it's a wild animal park at Doncaster. So we went up there uh, to see, well my wife wanted to see lion cubs, which turned out to be tiger cubs. <laughs> and because the lions don't have any cubs. But, um, so lions, tigers, the leopard was hiding, giraffes, and uh, meerkats, lemurs. What else did they have there? Um, wallabies, baboons, and some various cattle type things that I can't really remember, as well as things like emus and um, ostriches. You gave up on the paper cut. Oh, that's a pity. That's a pity. Yes. Hopefully you don't give up on it permanently, it's just for the moment. I think we'll just put the yeah on the bottom and then right okay. I'll zoom well I'll adjust and zoom in that camera a little bit I think let's tip it that way. And I worked out how to get my uh, camera control on screen so that I can actually control what I'm doing. There we go. That should do. Fluffy Twiggler, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Nice to see you again. Well, <laughs> we do talk some nonsense in a way. It's nice to see you again. And of course, all I'm seeing is your name in chat. But <laughs> I know you get what I mean. Um, so I'm actually hoping, well my wife was taking loads and loads and loads of photographs. Um, so 
I may act as some quite nice reference photographs for doing some artwork in the future. Of maybe some uh, some of the baby, well, baby, two to three week old uh, tiger cubs, which are not that um, not that small really. Just do the grey around here and then then do get move on to white. So I've done a fair bit of driving today and I'm feeling a little bit tired so I'm hoping I don't fall asleep on the stream. <laughs> I shouldn't do. There's no chance no real chance of me doing that but Once the stream's finished, I've got to go see if I can fix a problem with my car, which may or may not be uh, a problem I can fix. I may have to go back to the people that have just done some work on it, get them to fix it. Since I think they caused it. It was um, kind of funny this afternoon. Um, I say we were at uh, the wildlife park and they have meerkats there. <coughs> and um, they, um, one of the, one of the things I heard at least twice was. Uh, um, Kids asking where, well, which one was, now which one is it? I can't, I can't remember the names now, but we, um, for those of you that are in the UK, we've got um, insurance adverts that include um, meerkats. And there's, um, I think there was a baby Oleg, and then there was, there's, there's two others. One's supposed to be like a Russian count, and one sort of his sidekick shall we say and more than one of the kids was asking where this sidekick fellow was i forgot what the name is now but which you know which one is this it's kind of like kids they weren't young kids you know like the words are like two or three year olds they were sort of like seven and eights are you thinking they can't it's an advert their fluffy toys and this these uh, I couldn't work it out I'm well thank you very much fluffy twiglet you definitely buy what artwork with um, with tiger cubs on it or was it something else
I know I'm good. I was just thinking then my eyesight's a bit. It helps if I put the right glasses on. Uh, and it'll help with the fact that after wearing those glasses all day, my uh, my nose aches a little bit. So it'll be really nice to switch switch pairs of glasses for a while. Type of type. Tiger Cub artwork. Okay, well I shall bear that in mind, uh, Fuffy Twiglet. The um, the problem, though, of course, is you know how most of my uh, my artwork takes lots of hours uh, to do. But. Uh, I don't know what's the what's the next artwork next after this we're doing we'll be doing sort of chain mail for a little bit um then it's probably carving now that will take a long time to do so it's going to be a little while before we get round to uh to either pyrography or um scraper board again uh for there to be um, a chance of doing well, I suppose I could always do something like carving a tiger cub, but um, mm, that's a bit of a challenge. One that I'm quite sort of prepared to do, but um, not sure it's a good idea to do it just yet. Not uh, not that practiced with. Uh, carving that sort of thing um, of course I could always try something that I haven't done for an awfully long time and that is to try um, try some pencil drawings with real paper and real pencils Do something like scraper board, perhaps with um, with the copper foil, might be a, an interesting one. Obviously, that would match the uh, the tigers, uh, or, or well, not match them, but at least would be of a you know a similar sort of uh, color range. Could perhaps try one of those. I don't know if you wanted to, I mean, I'm, the, I'm not asking for a commitment, Fluffy Twiglet, but if you were looking to buy um, a Tiger Cub artwork, what sort of artwork would you look for? the grey like that I think I don't think we'll go all the way around I think we'll just leave it on the bottom so it looks like I know that's upside down no, that way like, like that upside down Yep, so we'll put some steam around that now with some white uh, white thread. Uh, needle threader, there it is. And white.
we get? One, two. Uh, okay, so why is my stream window frozen? I'm, well, I was about to say, either that's Edge or it's just the stream window's frozen. <laughs> Not quite sure which that will be. Right, we'll just put a little bit of the white around the bottom. We won't necessarily see it for the moment until we put the blue sky in, but um, we'll get around to that. But mainly there's quite a bit of white uh, over the top I want to put in here. Tell you what I also saw whilst I was at the wildlife park and it was actually in the shop and it was um, ostrich eggs which is uh, it's a great pity uh, and I suppose I should have asked but they didn't have any prices on them and sort of they appeared to be selling them but um, one of the things that I've uh, wanted to do for a long time now is to actually carve out of an ostrich egg with the um, with the high-speed rotary tool with a dental bit in it I can um, I can carve eggshells and that's one of the things I've kind of wanted to try uh, for quite some time because things like an ostrich egg shell are really thick and uh, you can cut them you know the they're self-supporting I mean even an egg um, a chicken's egg actually is but it's a lot more fragile overall but um, ostrich eggs are about a couple of millimeters thick and um, I looked I looked into um, buying some a while ago and then completely forgot about it to uh, to carve either you know either to carve out well, either patterns or you know something filigree like out of the shell, or um, you, know, you could carve. I don't know. You could carve some sort of shape into it as well. Um, but the other thing you can do with it is you can do sort of a kind of um, well, it's like it's it's a shadow carve or a semi relief carve where you you grind down the thickness of the shell such that if you put like a light inside or a candle something like that then it shines through the shell and the thicker the shell the darker it is so you can actually sort of create pictures and artwork on on shells and uh, that was something i was interested in trying um that and uh, i think it's emu shells because it, it email emu shells one of them anyway uh, the big birds like that produces a shell which on the outside looks green and as you shave it down it, it goes up um, a lovely blue colour until it gets white inside yeah carving eggshells <laughs> um, if you look uh, look it up on the um, in YouTube you'll see a, quite a few quite a few uh, art, you know they're old um, videos at the moment but uh, there are a few um, that have been done and some are really really beautiful and as you'll have gathered I kind of like odd things like that um, and the thought of trying it is, is interesting I know what I was kind of half put off by and that is sort of a single Something like a single ostrich egg is about eight to ten UK pounds. 
uh, which, uh, which isn't, well, I guess isn't expensive, but it isn't cheap, if you know what I mean. Uh, especially sort of to practice on. Uh, and I know I kept thinking what I'm going to actually have to do is do something like buy a, a dozen hen, hen's eggs or goose eggs, because they're a bit um, bigger and thicker. Uh, blow them out and then and then practice on those but they're uh, they're too thin to do the um well they're not too thin i suppose but they're really they're really thin so doing this sort of relief type stuff on them would be really difficult to do but i suppose if you can do it on one of those then um you can do it on a uh, an ostrich egg I know a while back I was looking at the potential of doing them as a commercial art form um, because well, they do take several uh, several tens of hours to do and they're, um, I know I was looking and sort of being a bit concerned about how well it stand up to things like postage. I know uh, an ostrich egg when um, when it's intact, shall we say, you can stand on without a problem. Um, but um, once you start it cutting into it and um, you know, removing a lot of the shell, <laughs> I'm not quite sure uh, just how uh, robust it is then. Bother. That's what happens sometimes. You press the release button by accident. One, two. And the needle just disappears straight inside the housing. So I was talking about high-speed carving the other night on the stream and I completely forgot about eggshells as a carving medium. Again, unfortunately, it's the one that's a little bit difficult to do on stream at the moment without the extractor. Um, the... Uh, High-speed tools, you know, create a heck of a lot of dust, and um, it's not the sort of thing you want to be breathing in. And I can't easily wear um, a dust mask and talk to you guys. <laughs> it would indeed uh, fear reaper um i uh, well it depends i guess it's on just how um fine you've got with the eggs but uh, i could quite imagine something like an ostrich egg surviving um but they are amazingly as i say they're um the shell is two to three millimeters thick so you know they're um They're not sort of uh, you know, fragile by any means, but it's uh, it's surprise delicate enough. I don't know. It depends on quite what you want to do. I mean, one of the things with the high speed tools, because um, you know, you're using a dental bit and it's spinning at sort of like three hundred thousand RPM. It, um, it it's not hard actually to be delicate if that sounds daft, because you don't have to press. Um, the, the, the problem you get with, with sort of being, you know, in quotes, being delicate with something, it, it tends to be because you're having to use really fine control of pressure. So like with carving, for example, you're having to exert quite a bit of force, but be able to stop it on, at an instant. 
with a high-speed carver it's like drawing with a pencil and you know how easy it is to stop when you're doing a line you know draw a line and stop it it's kind of comes second nature and it, there's nothing you don't there's no sort of delicate touch needed if you see what i mean and um the high speed carver is a bit like that Um, if you're trying to do like a relief carving or shadow carving on the surface, yes. Um, yes, you'd have to be careful. The, um, I mean, you probably, rather than using um, some of the tools that I tend to use are more cutters than they are. So um, a lot of the dental drills, as they're called, because they're not all drills anyway, are like carbide cutters. So they cut, si they cut on the side. So when you like cutting holes in eggs or, or doing a filigree design, then they work excellently for that. And it's it's just a case of stroking the edge. Um, I'm I'm guessing I'd probably use something like a di what they call a burr, diamond tipped burr, which is kind of like um, well different shapes, but let's say a, a round ball shaped end, which is basically just covered in little sharp diamonds. Um, those those will go through stuff really quickly, but you know I'm just trying to think a two 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 millimeter thick um, shell. You probably need to be a little bit careful, but I can I can see it being sort of um, relatively easy to. Well, I was about to say relatively easy to sort of create four levels in it, but that's probably um, inaccurate. As a beginner, I think it's probably going to be really hard, but you can do all sorts of. It's an interesting trick which I discovered on the internet. Um, well, you'd use an LED nowadays, but they did put something like a little tiny bulb uh, inside the shell while you carve it, because that way then you you actually can um, see the I'll say the color, but the shade that you're creating. As you as you shave off the the surface of the egg, and so um, you can actually sort of see when to stop, as opposed to guessing it. But uh, maybe it's something you start trying to do a surface carving of, and where, if you fail and accidentally go all the way through, then you just change that bit into a bit of filigree. <laughs> oh dear, but um, yeah, no, it's. Um, Ever since I started the rotary carving, that's one of the things I wanted to try. I think actually over in the States it's a bit easier to get things like ostrich eggs because uh, I don't know, there seems to be more, more farms over there uh, for that sort of thing. Um, than they are sort of in the UK and or Europe, uh, Europe. There are some places that actually sell ostrich eggs, not not uh, cleaned out shells, but actually ostrich eggs themselves. And um, you can actually eat them. You cook and eat them. You might need something like an electric dr uh, saw to get into the, into the egg to break it up and to be able to cook it, but um, you can actually eat them. And if you turn it into like an omelette, apparently it's about the equivalent of about 20 hen's eggs as an omelette. <laughs> so you need a big pan. So one, uh, one, odd, one ostrich egg, meal for four people. You can do that sort of art form on um, on eggs as well without needing to use um, high-speed rotary tools. You can use like a knife, scalpel to scrape it with, or sandpaper. Um, so it's not uh, 
it's not something that you can only try if you've got um, something like a Dremel or although I understand a Dremel is quite hard to do it with just because it's not actually very fast isn't a Dremel and the eggs are quite hard I don't know, maybe next time I uh, we have some eggs that uh, we don't quite eat in time. Rather than throwing them out, um, I'll have to blow them out and uh, maybe uh, have a go at uh, uh, just carving one on stream. Because one one or two, you know, one or two eggs, uh, hen's eggs won't be too bad in terms of they'll still create a lot of dust, but. It won't be anything like um, working for several hours on a big egg. Okay, favorite but no problem with that. You've probably gone by now because I get. Uh, Whilst I'm doing this, I tend to keep, I tend to accidentally, not intending to, but keep my eyes head down. Um, either at what I'm doing or looking at the camera, um, I keep forgetting to actually look up at the chat window that's um, sat there. Actually, that's um, that is one of the nice things about Windows 10. Um, I run multiple monitors, and uh, for Windows 8. I don't know if Windows 7 did it, um, where you could snap windows to the side of you know, the monitor. It only worked on the file, the five edges, so it didn't work actually on the monitor, it worked on the desktop, so the far left of the desktop or the far right. So the bit where you could, you know, half and half your screen with uh, two documents, for example, only worked when you had a single monitor. Well, with uh, Windows 10, um, it works on a per monitor basis. So with three monitors here, I can snap to the edges of the monitor. And not only that, you can snap to the corners. So if you snap in the to an edge, you get half the screen. If you snap to a uh, to a corner, you get a quarter of the screen. So like I've got three windows in front of me. I've got the OBS window, um, a stream window, and the chat. Um, it's really easy to place those and just snap them and um, it's uh, you know nice everything's lined up there's no overlapping or anything like that you haven't updated yet now um, I did um, I did one machine on Saturday Saturday morning yeah and uh, is it Saturday morning no I did one machine Friday Friday night, that's it, Friday night. And uh, it, uh, it's a sort of a sacrificial machine, shall we say. Uh, and that went really smoothly, and I quite liked it afterwards. So um, I did my main machine, this one that I'm using here for this, um, yesterday. Uh, and that went uh, quite smoothly as well. It's got a few quirks as Windows 10, but overall I quite um, quite like it. Not sure I'm keen on the start menu. Um, I think I liked either Windows 7 or Windows 8 start menu slightly better. But it's just what you get used to. The only other thing that's a kind of a quirk is... Um, I can't find a way... What you're supposed to be able to do if you've got a like an application in in the file manager... You're supposed to be able to right click on it and pin it to the start menu and indeed it gives you the menu option to do it but as you can probably gather it gives you the menu option to do it but completely ignores you when you ask it to do it it just doesn't do it you can pin stuff to the start menu if you uh, find it or so far i've been able to do it if you find it in search and then right click and pin to start menu it works but not when you do it in the file manager um, which is a little bit of a pain in the neck. And 
and uh, certain things don't, didn't appear. I think we did install yesterday. I installed Hexchat, I think, yesterday at one point. And um, that just wouldn't uh, wouldn't appear on the menus at all. It was supposed to be there, but it wasn't appearing. So that's maybe a bug somewhere in the uh, in the menu system, but. Um, I'll see if we can, if, if it uh, if it disappears. But overall, quite pleased with Windows 10. All my applications seem to be working. I've been using the uh, Microsoft Edge browser as well, which works, um, which works well. It's quite fast as well. But uh, a little, well, it's, uh, I was going to say its design is a little quirky, but they all are. You know, it takes a little while to work out where. Um, where things like the URL bar is and stuff like that, but because it's only an input box whilst you're inputting things, um, otherwise it just looks like a, t a Windows title, and um, that took me a while to work out. You know, while being sort of two minutes, but as opposed to being completely obvious immediately. And for some reason, whilst it will play a Twitch stream, it will pop the stream window out of the page. For some reason. Even though it's supposedly been told to allow pop-ups for Twitch. But... I know Fear Reaper's not uh, not keen on up, uh, on upgrading to uh, Windows 10. I don't know, Fluffy Twiggler, are you um, intending to do it, or uh, have you decided to stick with what you've got? I know you said there you um, you haven't done it yet, which sort of implies that you probably are going to, but. Uh, I guess ultimately everybody's got no choice. Oh, and I guess as a tip for anybody that feels like they might want to go to the Doncaster Wild Wildlife uh, Animal Park, um, if you want to have food, don't leave it till an hour before close. Well, around an hour before closing time, because 
from about an hour and a half before closing time. If they run out of anything, they don't bother refilling it. And by an hour, they've virtually closed. So um, you might not get anything to eat if you leave it too long. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like um, Fluffy Twiglet with, it's kind of like, no real reason to upgrade. I was quite happy with what I got. It was doing everything, but I was on Windows 7. Uh, and the Windows 8 machine is, is okay. Yeah, it's fine. It does what it's uh, meant to do. In fact, both of them do. Um, but um, it's kind of like the Windows 7 one probably could have done with being updated just because it, it, it's not that long, relatively speaking, till it... Um, uh, it's end of life, and I didn't particularly want to, uh, you know, still have a machine around like that. But I'm not actually sure there's a lot of difference between ten and ten and eight, or even seven for that matter. I mean, most of the, most of the visible differences seem to be in um, in things like the start menu. Because I mean stuff like screen layouts and you know, the wallpapers, you feel like that they're just wallpapers and stuff. But I think the biggest um, the biggest change has been the um, the browser. Because they've dropped um, they've dropped support for a heck of a lot of technology in that. Um, there's no no um, silver light, which is Microsoft's answer to um, <laughs> to something that I've completely forgotten about the Adobe um, thing, um, and they've dropped they've dropped uh, legacy support for all the old um, uh, you know um, backwards compatibility. They've dropped. Um, what else have they dropped? They've dropped ActiveX objects. So basically, they've just gone completely standards mad on it. Everything's um, uh, it, it's sort of HTML, HTML5 standards compliant. Not too far to go now with this uh, white steam. Make sure my fingers are out of the way. I can probably go a bit faster. There we go. Uh, it doesn't spot Derby. 
No, it does. Yeah, it does. I've run, I'm running uh, Photoshop on it. No, it's um, it doesn't support. The, there's an Adobe technology that's the name is forget. Uh, I've forgotten that does. Um, Twitch used to use it for its video, and so did um, so did YouTube. And I've I've forgotten um, just what it's called. And it's it's one of those things that I'll remember after the stream. Um, so Silverlight, which was Microsoft's um, competitor thing, if you like, which never fantastically took off, it stopped. Uh, they've dropped support for Silverlight, but not the Adobe thing, which is kind of built in. Uh, no, Adobe Adobe itself runs fine. I'm running um, I'm running Photoshop CC 2015 and Lightroom without a problem. They uh, they fire up and and run okay. So there's no problem with that on Windows 10. Um, Painter works as well. The drivers for um, the Wacom tablets and, and Centix work uh, without a problem. So OBS works. <laughs> Although OBS does seem to be updating rather rapidly at the moment. I think I've had three updates in as many days. Um, actually, I haven't tried Sculptress yet, so um, oh, I don't have ZBrush, so I can't uh, I can't test that. Um, but I don't really expect any of them to uh, to fail. I don't think there's much change to the core technologies. That, the only thing that's complaining is the antivirus because it's um, the antivirus wants to install its own proxy, basically, or add-on so that in theory it can protect you from uh, malicious websites if you happen to visit malicious websites or accidentally or go to a site where one's been infected I guess um, but um, at the moment uh, Microsoft Edge doesn't allow add-ons doesn't support them, doesn't have the mechanism for them so the um, the antivirus keeps popping up and saying would you like to change to Internet Explorer? Or Chrome, <laughs> so that I can protect you. <laughs> it seems like, um, well, at this moment in time, I'm only using Edge for something else, and it, it, I'm, it, I'm kind of feeling uh, a rather interesting. Well, I'm kind of thinking an interesting thought, and that that's kind of like um, the antivirus by saying it can't, it can't protect you if you're. Um, you visit a malicious website. It's kind of like it's going well. It, that you know that means I'm not very good because if it gets past your browser and gets onto the desktop, I can't stop it. And it's going like well, that's your job. However, it gets introduced, you're supposed to stop it running once it is introduced. So, yeah, good job if you can stop it getting here in the first place. <laughs> uh, hey, Eddie Fall guy, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. See if I can get this steam done, and then we can actually get on with some uh, some grass. Yes, trust you're doing well there today, Eddie Full Guy.
Yeah, I know, Colour Monkey, thank you very much. It keeps bugging me. I um I generally only colour calibrate one of my one of one of my monitors and it's actually uh, needs doing again. It's out of uh, it's not been calibrated for about two months now. And um he kind of wants me to calibrate the uh, the other two as well, but uh, I haven't bothered yet. I don't tend to use them when I, uh, for uh, colour work when I'm doing uh, doing anything where I need the colour calibration. But it still keeps um, perking up and saying, "You're not done, monitors two and three. <laughs> and I keep going, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> right so that's the steam done so that's what this will look like that so, I know it doesn't show up fantastically well at the moment but we get some blue sky in around it um, I actually don't want to do the yeah let's do the grass I'll do the grass first and then we'll do the blue sky afterwards so I'm going to do some dark green sort of Effectively the shadow, if you like, of the locomotive. So underneath it, um, certainly, and, and an area probably around here, which I'll look at in a minute on the other side. And then we'll do a couple of patches of lighter colour. airbrushing or um, or something else with it uh, Eddie you know threads you are both going to go through my threading needle whether you want to or not you are both going through there That's both of them. Yeah, it is. That's both of them. There we go. One, two, three. Right. So I know underneath the loco. This is where I get my pencil out. Underneath the loco, um, I've got sunlight coming this way. So uh, we're sort of. Hmm, Getting some reflection off that side panel. Let's say it's coming straight down. So we're going to have underneath there probably a little bit. No, we won't do anything on that side. We're going to do some sort of around here. Yeah, like that. And then uh, we'll just have a well, I don't know, let's have a... Uh, like that. Something like that. And we'll split two colours across there. So where's my horizon going to be? Um, horizon line. I've got to do it on that one. About there, yeah, kind of where I was thinking of. So we put the horizon in about there. Yeah, so we'll do green grass up to the horizon, and then it'll be blue above. So we'll put the dark blue in first, which is the area underneath the locomotive, um, all the way out to here, and a bit just around the side of the track there.
Well, spidering usually, well, is, is one of three things. That looks okay. Uh, I think you said you still got some work to do on the clouds, didn't you? Um, looks okay. Spidering generally. It, there's three things associated with spidering. Um, too much pressure, too thin pain, too close to the artwork. But it's it's not. It, it's it's kind of all three together, rather than one of them. So, you know, too much pressure, too close to the artwork. So you know what a, a, a given pressure uh, at sort of. Two inches or so 10 inches for example would be too much pressure if you bring it at, down to two inches um, so it's it, or paint that's um, okay to spray it 10 inches because it's thin would be too thin if you come down to sort of an inch so it's kind of um, a juggling act between all of those and I've got a feeling you were using um, Oh, welcome, uh, rain clouds. I apologise for not seeing that. I hope it popped up on screen. I didn't actually notice. It should have done. Um, but I didn't get the sound. Why did I not get the sound playing? I'm going to have to investigate that. And I miss somebody else as well, if he's still, if they're still in chat, the McGuinness. Apologise. Both of you, um, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for following me. <laughs> but despite missing the uh, notification, uh, I do appreciate you, uh, you doing that and following. Thank you very much. And I will see if I can sort out the sound for later. Because it's a sound that alerts me. I don't know if you guys heard sound. Uh, probably not, I suspect. Maybe this Windows 10 has got something into it. What paint are you using, Eddie? Are you using a ready mixed paint? Um, like Com Art or something like that. Um, Fifteen psi is is off. Well, it's it's quite. It's, you can go lower, but that is quite low. I I generally just still use about. Um, yeah, <laughs> Createx. Um, so you're using Createx straight out of the bottle. That I shouldn't really be spidering at fifteen um, at all. Um, I don't think. I don't think your brushes, uh, air brushes, are going to push that much air, especially you, you with the compressors that you're using. Um, so I'm really surprised. It kind of sounds like it's um, it's settled out a heck of a lot and is not mixed properly. Um, and rain clouds, thank you for um, for you know, letting me know. I will check out the, uh, the. I'll wait till after the stream and I'll check out see if I can get the sound working again. And. Uh, <laughs> cheapest airbrush <laughs> yeah but that doesn't mean it's no good <laughs> um i think you using a badger and a water i can't remember um no you shouldn't be it does it does sound like the paint maybe yeah maybe settled out a lot which is kind of unusual because usually what happens with with the paint is the the carrier liquid evaporates off and it gets thicker rather than uh, rather than thinner but if it settles out and doesn't mix in properly then actually yeah but createx is a decent paint brand uh, ad yeah it might be cheaper than a badge of velocity yeah there's no reason that's it's really odd if you if you're spidering at 15 psi um the uh the other thing could be that's happening uh, especially if the paint's a bit thick is what you're doing is um, what's happening is the paint's not coming out of the airbrush because it's a bit thick. It's taking 
you having to hold the needle up more. Um, and um, and therefore, when you uh, then then you are you're opening it more. Yeah, I can sort of see the scenario where you're actually ending up getting quite close to the the work because the paint you're trying to pull the needle back quite a long way because um, the paint's reluctant to come out which means that um, uh, effectively you're just getting a lot of air coming out of it and uh, there's very little paint in the air therefore as soon as it hits the paper it's just blowing all over the not paper the um, medium it's just going all over the place that's a possibility I suppose possibility I suppose it shouldn't be spidering at all not at, certainly not at 15 and, you know, no, normally if it was at 15 and, and I'd be you know the sort of thing I'd be looking at there is it's over reduced um, Yeah, because that, that's typically what it is. It's over-reduced and there's just too much liquid and not enough pigment um, in it. But uh, if you're trying it straight, and Createx is quite a quite a thick paint as well. Mm. It can be a difficult thing to get right, but... Um, were, you, were you trying to get really fine-lined? Eddie, I guess if you were trying, if you were going an inch away, you'd be trying to get really fine lines, I guess. Um, yeah, I think at, I think at this this point I'd have done exactly what you did, which is get out of, get out a heavy stick and uh, and just finish it with that, and then you know. Um, get a spare bit of paper or something and uh, and just sort out the airbrush afterwards um, uh, Creatix, Creatix, well Creatix I've usually found to be uh, I've not tried a great deal of it but I've usually for, for me everybody's different I find it a bit thick to uh, to spray direct but um, fill in the detail parts mm. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's it's kind of tied in. So over over reduced does it sometimes? Um, too much paint in one area does it? So, um, you know, you you you're overloading the area and it just doesn't dry. It just spreads out. Um, that's kind of the other one, which is kind of the, the thing I was I was trying to describe with the um, with it being a bit thick. You sometimes get more paint than you expect in, in an area. Um, the other thing to make sure is the airbrush is clean, actually, to be honest. It's just occurred to me that that's something that can happen as well. Um, where you, um, you start... Because the airbrush is... If the airbrush gets partially blocked, you start drawing back on the needle to the point where all of a sudden you get a lot of paint coming through. Usually you see it splutter though if you do that. Um, but you get so much paint coming through that it just hits and goes, you know, bang, spreads out. Which is sort of like a spidering effect. And then um, once it's, it sort of blows a bit, but it's more of a splatter than a spider, um, is that. And generally speaking, you're finding it, you know, you, you feel you feel something's not right when you're doing that but yeah sod it out afterwards get you know if you've got the got the stuff to you know the heavy stick will do it then i'd go on with it and get it finished and uh and short it afterwards right green let me get some green in here So rain clouds, I take it um, you have an interest in uh, in trains. From your uh, your comment, or was it just um, uh, just just a, a a comment based on the fact that I happen to be doing a train?
I sort of have an interest in trains, not not to the point where I'm going to go sit on a platform somewhere and watch them, but um, I'm kind of I kind of like the the aesthetics of the the trains. So some some of the trains I like, some some I don't, and uh, I do kind of like enjoy um, playing Train Simulator. And one of these days, I do want to get um, a model railway, model railway, railroad put together. Um, but that interests me more from the electronic control point of view, getting a computer to run the trains, um, and uh, actually building uh, building uh, the layout itself, because um, that. Yeah. Being a, an artist and crafter, it's the creating of it that interests me more than playing with trains. As I say, I want to get the, tr the computer to play with the trains. I just want to create the thing that lets you do that. But uh, I do find some wonderful aesthetics with some of the models. Or some of the trains that you see. Like this one with this streamlining and uh, the last one that I did in Punchcraft, which was a class 66 heavy haul locomotive. Um, it just looked a, a real chunky sort of um, powerful engine uh, with a sort of, <laughs> to me, it just had the look of I'm going that way and whatever's behind me is coming with it wants it or not. <laughs> So, uh, and it just uh, it just looked the train just looked like it had an attitude, which fascinated me. Well, I'm not going to do any green behind the train because it's it's sort of a shadow, so it, we wouldn't have the dark green. I'm going to use sort of grass green. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't get grass between the um, sleepers, uh, between the rails, but I'm an artist. I can change what I like. When am I going to finish this rain? I think that's what you're asking there, rain uh, clouds. Um, there's probably about six hours, I'm thinking, uh, to uh, to finish this, something like that. Uh, we've already done 14, so it's going to... Um, oh, yeah, we've already done 14. Two more today, so that'll be 16. So... Um, we're probably into about 22 hours to finish this, which is uh, quite a lot. Um, should stream building and engage? Um, I kind of intended to do that, Eddie. That and put it on um, YouTube as well. Um, I'm not going to build. I'm not going to build one until I get the new studio, which I am hoping will be later this year, but uh, maybe next year. Um, because when I get the new studio, I also get a new office, and the the office is quite large, so I'll have a work desk because I work from home um, at one side, and um, there'll be space at the other side for an engaged layout. So I fully intend it probably be something like on a weekend, or maybe maybe you know during the week, or maybe. Um, so I kind of fully intended to do that. Probably wouldn't be sort of a full time stream or anything like that. But um, maybe, as I say, kind of like Saturday afternoons or uh, or the occasional time in the after uh, on an evening stream. But yes, to build uh, build scenery. I intended doing the whole thing. I don't know about on stream, but uh, certainly as a YouTube thing, all the way through from sitting down and doing the design, track layout. Um, and things like 
uh, all the signalling because I want uh, I want the layout to be fully signalled, to so properly signalled um, all the way around, not just pretend signals. Um, I want to be able to track all the locomotives wherever they are, so the train knows where you know the computer knows where they are. So there's all that to do. Um, and there's a lot of wiring and electronic design to be done to support all that sort of stuff. So I was thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, main class. What the the tra trains or or the steam trains? Um, steam trains. Yeah. I mean this thing. Um, this thing, which is is. Um, quite a powerful for steam lock well for locomotive it's quite a powerful locomotive in what it used to haul I mean it's 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 a passenger locomotive rather than a um, a freight locomotive but they uh, you know for a passenger locomotive it, um, it it would haul what the sort of the high-speed well, in the UK, the high-speed trains um, haul in terms of um, carriages, and almost as fast. I mean, this is um, this particular locomotive, the Mallard, is is the steam world record holder, land speed record for steam locomotives, at uh, either 125 or 126 miles per hour. I'm not quite sure what the record is, but it's one of those two. Um, I think. Officially, it's 125, but they did do 126, but they rounded it down a little bit. So yeah, they are amazing, amazing things. But uh, trains in general, you got this sort of 30 foot long thing, and I mean, especially in them in in America, where you'll get something like a 30 foot locomotive. Well, you get four of them. And they're towing a train which is about a mile long. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a lot of hours, uh, rain clouds. Okay, it potentially could be a little bit less than that because I'm counting stream hours. Um, and I do, as you might have noticed, occasionally stop while I'm talking, depending on the subject and depending on what. Um, you know, the fact that this is a relatively sharp needle um, that I'm working with and I don't want to jab myself uh, too hard with it but it's um, you know, that's actually one of the reasons why I do stream is because people are very unaware of just how long art takes to or any craft for that matter just takes to um, uh, to create you know something you might look at this and, and think oh it's a couple of hours and yet you know the anybody who's watched the streams um, yeah whilst I admit I do you know do stop and talk I'm not sort of hanging about in doing any of this really um, and some of the other things that I do like the pyrography or the carving which sort of take tens of hours you know you're talking 30 40 50 60 hours um, and unfortunately, a lot of time when people see this on things like uh, YouTube, they'll watch a time lapse. Um, and even though they might realise it's a time lapse, people still don't get a uh, comprehension of what like a 50 to 1 time lapse is. Um, I mean, a 50 to 1 time lapse means the time it's taking me to do this would take half an hour. Um, on uh, on a YouTube video and quite often with things like pyrography there'll be something like a 200 to 1 time lapse on it and um, that does a as I say does a couple of things it get it, it gives people who watch it even though they might realize it's time lapse it still gives them an unreasonable no that's not no, that's not true it gives them um, an inaccurate idea of how long things take to do and also um, people who want to try and do the art form they have a an expectation that you know they saw it done in half an hour therefore something like this they could get you know 
you know, they're a beginner, it'll take them a couple of hours. And after a couple of hours on this, you know, um, I think we had about four wheels done. And um, that's, uh, I say, that's one of the reasons why I, I want to stream, is just to, uh, to help people understand how long some of these art forms take. And uh, you know, some of the, uh, obviously some of the, uh, some of what Twitch is doing now with uh, showing creative and, uh, and some of the people that are doing some really good uh, stuff um, is helping um, people, you know, a few people, shall we say, who are watching uh, realize um, just how long it takes and why art costs a fair bit of money. Actually, Eddie, as well as the end scale, one of the things I've got in mind for that layout is to incorporate some T scale into it. So I've already got a theme in mind, but uh, layouts always have to have themes. <laughs> But the theme I'm going to keep secret until I actually start doing it on in public. Actually, that might be the first thing you see me stream is um, is the T scale. I kind of want to do a little tiny T scale uh, layout for just for fun because you can get um, an intercity 125 train as, as a t-scale now a t-scale you get a layout inside this hoop so if you um, if I zoom out I'll show you the side this is a 12 inch hoop but you could actually get a t-scale a full t-scale layout inside that hoop <laughs> and quite a complex one as well uh, not just a circle, you know, you could get a few bends in there. Um, T scale, T stands for three millimeters. That's three millimeters between the tracks. And three millimeters is tiny. Um, so yeah, in fact, I think, I think this needle is, what's this needle? I've got, a, I did have a rule around here somewhere. Um, I was going to say, I think this needle is only about one and a half millimetres thick. Um, off the top of my head. Zoom back in a bit. Um, so about twice the width of this needle is three millimetres. Um, they, um, they play tricks to drive something that, and they actually use magnets to hold the... Th to hold the thing down on the track to get enough traction to actually run uh, otherwise it would just it's just too light it is is the stuff at that size um, and they use um, the electric motors that they use inside them is you know you get a, a watch with it that vibrates or um, some of the, some of the real small um, mobile phones that vibrate uh, not the big ones, but the small ones. They have a little tiny electric motor in them, with uh, and they vibrate because they've got a weight on the end, which is not is offset, so it it it, it wobbles, uh, and that's what causes the vibration. But they use um, they use little little tiny uh, motors that are about sort of four millimeters long, 
<laughs> to drive these trains. Uh, absolutely fascinating. They run them on batteries. Um, on the you know, like any other electric model train set, you, it picks up the current from the electricity from the rails. But they run them on a couple of batteries and um, fascinating things. Um, no, you just take extremely good care of them, eighty fall guy. Anyway, uh, whilst I want to make a, a tiny layout, just to like coffee table type thing, just to. I love tiny. Tiny models like that, I absolutely love. So I want to have a go at it, and that's something I can sort of build in this sort of space. I probably won't do it here. I say I'll wait until I get the new studio, but um, I can build it in a in a sort of a desktop space. Um, but when it comes to the the end scale layout that I want to incorporate in, I need to build my own um, trains for the T scale. You can get um, you can get the engine bodies for or, or the train if you like with just a, uh, instead of having um, sort of a I don't know um, a one two five body on it or usually the Japanese train bodies um, you just get clear plastic just like box and then you can do what you like with them so uh, for the end scale I need to build my own N, uh, own T scale trains which could be a fun thing to do on, on stream um, I might have to get some sort of microscope or magnifying glass for the for the cameras to show you guys if I do do that but uh, might be interesting. I want to con computer control those as well. That's one of the fascinating things about the scales. The um, double O, which is the UK sort of um, standard model railway size that everybody has and then you get the end scale which is half the track width but a quarter of the size or volume um, and then you get um, Z scale which is again half the size um, but and again a quarter of the volume so you've already gone down to an eighth of the a sixteenth of the volume in going from double O down to um, uh, Z scale and then you go down to T which is um, it isn't half uh, Z because Z is four and a half millimeters between tracks and, and uh, T scale is three so it's what two thirds but so that's um, and my and that's four that's four ninths of the volume yeah four ninths of the volume I think I think that's right so it's um, it's amazingly sort of in the size of a double O loop, you can fit one heck of a lot of T scale stuff. And uh, when it comes to things like models like that, um, not only do I love tiny, I like lots. That's, unfortunately, you can't get many uh, many different trains in T scale, and controlling them by computer is challenging, shall we say. Um, otherwise, I'd uh, I'd love to build a full, you know, a layout sort of the size of this, uh, uh, sort of a normal desk, which is what two point four meters, two meters long, six foot by about a meter and a bit by about two, two and a half three feet wide. In T scale, the amount of layout you could get in that space is absolutely phenomenal. Well, you better go away then and sort yourself out. And if you don't start behaving um, properly, we'll um, help you on your way.
Alright. Nearly finished this bit of the uh, the sort of the main shadowed area underneath the locomotive. A lot of it should really be almost black, but um, it, 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 too much black doesn't. Uh, you know, in real life, it would be a black. It'd be it'd be sort of really dark shadow, but. Um, for, for this purpose is it's artistic license um, the green actually tends to look a bit bit better than just doing black under there you um, you lose well whilst there isn't much detail things like the black areas here and, and the back here and, and around here sort of thing if I did the um, the space between the tracks underneath the locomotive black as well you kind of would lose all of those. You'd lose the shape of some parts of the engine. So I'm not. Uh, that's one reason why I've switched uh, switched to doing it with um, dark green. Basically, I could have used sort of any other colour, but um, the dark green means um, it sort of ties in as grass as a as a believable colour, if you like, and. Uh, ties in with what we do outside of the uh, outside of the rails because you'll notice if you if you're half familiar with rails generally speaking they'd have uh, sleepers of some kind which actually holds them in place really um, I'm not putting those in either it's a detail that doesn't add much value to the uh, to the image um, and kind of just makes it look more complicated will draw you right down towards the sleepers more than keeping it on the engine so that's one that's that's um, one of the sort of the main reasons for not actually putting the sleepers in plus they're a bit fiddly and um, <laughs> and it's a bit of messing about to do them um, Fine. Thank you. I think you do describe engines as being handsome, so I don't see uh, any problem with that. Right, uh, this bit down here, and then the side of the side of the locomotive. Um, just working out which is the best way to do this. You can. Fill it in, as I said before, in any sort of direction you like, as long as you fill the uh, fill the space. Um, I generally like to uh, to do it such that I don't have to cut the thread and uh, start you know start start again in a slightly different place. It takes, you know, it just adds to the time. If I uh, if I have to cut the thread, it adds to the time that it takes. It feels a you know a little bit more disjointed, and but there's nothing wrong with doing it that way at all. And we will soon run out of the green. I'm not going to have enough to do this complete um, section in the with this uh, particular bobbin. really well it's not surprising but it is surprising just how much um, thread that doing this takes up um, each of these bobbins that I use I think it's 30 meters 100 feet of thread and when we come to do the sky for example I expect to use um, two to three bobbins for so two to three hundred feet of uh, thread just in the sky alone um, there's probably close to three quarters to uh, to a kilometre of thread 
in um, in one of these pictures of this size. Yeah, what am I talking about? Kilometers. I can't do maths, can I? Uh, I was talking about a thousand feet, not a thousand meters. Uh, so it's a third of a kilometer. Blimey. I thought it was sounded a bit long. Um, and I got mass air level. Long time ago, but I got mass air level. And at one time I could do a thing like uh, the 48 times table. Counting 36s and things like that. Can't do it anymore. These days I have to take my socks off if I want to count above a thousand. Now I wonder who got that joke. Uh. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, guys. I like that one, Nady. That's quite uh, <laughs> quite a clever one. There we go, we're out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I must admit, I, I, I wouldn't have thought of that one. That's quite, that's, that's quite a clever, uh, clever one was that 84 guy. That really is. Now, interestingly, I think there's a, is that, th yeah, slight difference in shade between these two. It's not really a problem though. Um, that's one reason I was doing it this way. Um, so I'll get an exit sort of a straight line. It sort of can be just. It could look just like a um, a slightly darker shadow. So that's the problem with uh, with these rather light rings. Um, The um, the shades sometimes vary, very sometimes subtly, sometimes a little less subtly, and um, this one's quite close, but not quite exact. Um, I assume Fear VP you were talking to Adi there, were you, or um, were you meaning me? Yeah, Adi, I thought so. Because Adi does. Um, It is, generally speaking, is um, jewellery design and uh, chain mail. Uh, the um, the airbrushing is kind of more of a sideline at the moment, <laughs> I think. I know you want to try and get back into doing um, airbrushing uh, AD, I believe, but uh, mind you, so do I. <laughs> and you, at least, at least you've been doing some recently. I haven't. 
One, two, three. Now these big areas will actually go a lot quicker than the uh, than some of the other areas we've been doing. When you change direction a lot, or um, have to stop or work in sort of areas that are lots of angles to it, uh, it does slow you down quite considerably. But once you can do large blocks of colour. And, and sort of large runs of uh, of, of loops. And this isn't. You know, this is by no means large, but at least we got a fairly decent length of uh, uh, run of straight stitching. Then um, it does tend to go a bit faster. And. Um, I was going to say something then, and I've completely forgotten what it was. I thought I thought I thought I just saw something pop up on screen, but I missed that. But I just looked at the log; there was nothing in it, so I was seeing things. And for those uh, two guys that uh, joined early tonight, if they're not, uh, or anybody else that's watching, by the way, uh, you may not be fam you're that familiar with the stream. Well, I do. Um, this is just one of five crafts that I do on on stream, not all at once, and um, but I do I do each of them in turn, and do one uh, one piece or one art piece. Uh, with each of them in turn. Uh, this one at the moment, Punchcraft, happens to be uh, it's his turn, so um, we're doing this locomotive. Next, after this, is going to be some chainmail jewellery work, probably for I don't know. Well, it depends on how, how many rings I've got and um, what I feel like trying or doing. But we we'll probably spend at least a week doing that. And then we'll move on to some uh, relief carving, so hand carving with sharp chisels and things like that. Um, no blood, just sharp chisels. Um, in fact, the sharper the tool, the less likely you are to cut yourself, which sounds really silly, but it's true. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do in, uh, to carve in that at this moment in time. Still trying to think of uh, suitable ideas. That then is probably going to be followed by pyrography, I think. Okay, well, let's take a look, uh, Rain Cloud. As um, as Fear Reaper says, as long as it's not <laughs> offensive, then this is kind of a family stream. So, well, 
Ah, hey, that's an interesting one. That is an interesting one. Um, have you, um, Rain Clouds, have you seen 3D Block? Um, if not, take a look at 3D Block. Uh, he streams on Twitch, he's an airbrush artist. And um, the xenomorph that you do, you, you're doing there is the same, well, what's we'll the same, but he's doing a xenomorph as well in uh, monochrome on. Um, airbrushing um i think he might be back to, well it doesn't stream at the weekend but on monday so that would be uh an interesting one Not bad work there, uh, not bad work there at all, uh, Rain Cloud. I'm not a pencil artist, so it's a bit difficult for me to uh, to, to sort of comment. Um, the thing I would say you would help your, um, your pieces is to develop a little bit more shading technique. So, uh, so shadows as opposed to colour shading. Um, you, you, you are showing some quite good. Um, what's the word? Development in that area. Uh, so you just need to do a bit more work in uh, on on sort of like environmental shadows uh, cast on. On on like faces or on the master chief, you know, from the uh, from the from the various bits of the uh, uh, cost. I say costume, but you know, uniform suit. But otherwise, that looks really good. <laughs> well, if you've taken the picture of uh, of the koala, um, Kaliati, then by all means. As um, Fear Reaper says, phot photography is also an art form. Getting a good photograph um, is um, is a skill, and it's a, it's it is an art form to do it. No, your um, proportions look okay, uh, Rain Cloud. I mean, I've seen the morphs. I'm not that sure about, but uh, you know, the Master Chief and the face. Uh, the proportions uh, are fine. The shading, colour shading, looks okay. It's, it, you know, it's, you always get better. Everybody always gets better. So, you know, you can do more than that. But the face in particular looks flat. What you're missing is is the shading, which comes from the shadows that you get with sort of, you know, you, your nose sticks out, therefore it creates a shadow. Your eyes stick in, therefore they tend to be shadowed. That sort of thing. I notice you've started to do some of it um, on on the face in particular. Uh, it's just not quite there yet, but um, you've started to started to work on that, and it looks okay. So it's really well done. Uh, yeah, I like koalas as well. And Kaliat is right there, yeah. Just try something like a sphere in, in space or, or you know, as though it's sat on a desk with a light. You try it with one light, then you try it with try and do the same thing with two lights. Um or even just you know, spheres yeah. Spheres a bit more challenge, try a cube. Because then you've got nice straight edges and makes it a bit easier to start with. Um But yes, he's issues uh, she. <laughs> yes, Kylie is um, is right there. It does help a lot because when you if you start trying to do something like that on say Master Chief, you'll tie yourself in knots unless you sort of understand how the light goes. But Master Chief is um, you know the arms are the right length. I mean that's something everybody always gets wrong. Is they always make arms too long, um, so the proportions are fine. And the face, the proportions are fine. 
Seen them off? No idea. I don't know what one looks like, other than I've seen pictures. But well done. Well done indeed. Oh, yeah, no, I understand what you mean, uh, Cagliati. It's just sometimes... Um, it, it's sometimes a bit easier to see to see square-sided objects shadow-wise than it is these um, curves, but... If you can do curves better than, well, I was gonna say if you can do curves better than, than cubes, draw cubes. <laughs> it's, it's always practice the thing that you can't do as well, rather than the things that you can. Um, if that's your first facial portrait, that's well done. That really is well done for a first uh, facial portrait. So. Um, keep practicing. You're gonna get really good. Keep practicing. And yeah, you've got a lot of time to learn. Um, it gets easy though to put it off. <laughs> and as you get slightly older, it gets really easy to put off doing it. So I'd, um, I'd get into the habit of practicing, then you'll tend to continue practicing. Um, but if that's your first one, well done, well done. Yep, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it is, yes, and not being afraid to make mistakes. Um, making mistakes and understanding, you know, where they came from, or correcting them at the time, or making mistakes and saying afterwards, OK, I made a mistake. Um, that's the mistake I made. This is what I would do differently. That helps in learning it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that and ignoring um, the the opinions of everybody on your drawing, including mine. <laughs> I don't know whether you've had an experience of it or any of you guys. It's um, you will always get people saying they don't like your artwork. It's terrible. Um, it's not very good. That sort of thing. Um, unless they tell you why they believe it's not very good, ignore them. And if they do tell you why it's not very good to to them, evaluate it, and then decide to ignore them. <laughs> Um, but um, you <laughs> Bob, <laughs> he had to come into the conversation somewhere, didn't he? But he's right. Yeah. Um, you will always get people that will say your artwork's terrible, whatever it is. And uh, as I said, unless it's constructive criticism, you know that they're just talking out the back of their head. Uh, and if it's constructive criticism, it, it, they won't be telling you it's terrible. They'll be telling you, you know, this isn't as good as it could be because. So you can usually say, tell, um, tell in the first few sentences or first few words even. I'm going to say, if I was going to give another tip, another tip would be, I know I said keep practicing, but treat everything you do as a as a final art piece. It's not a practice piece. You might practice whilst doing it, but you're not. It's not a practice piece. It's a final art piece that you may choose to be less detailed. You may choose to leave it rough. You may choose to leave it half finished, but it was a final art piece. It wasn't a practice piece. Um, and it's okay to do it wrong and it's okay to decide not to finish it and it's okay to say okay I'm not getting this how I want it I'll start again um, but if if you go sometimes if you people if they're going with the idea of it being a practice they don't do the best so um, yep 
that's always worth it but don't dwell too long on it because what um if you start looking at what you, you've got to look at it as you say as what you could do to improve not what you did wrong or what was bad about it you've got to look at you've got to use that positive thing which is that could have been better as opposed to that was terrible so that could have been better because I'm not. Um, I'm, I've never actually seen uh, Monkey Strike, M uh, Monkey on Strike, and uh, I didn't know there was a website like that. Um, I shall have to take uh, a look. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to do some um, pencil and paper drawings on um, on stream so you can just see how bad I am at it. <laughs> All right. Um, how much extra practice I need at it? I could do it electronically, but I kind of feel like it might be an interesting challenge to do it with a piece of paper. It's quite a long time since I worked with with um, pencil and paper. Maybe we'll do that after I've done this um, this punch craft. Maybe we'll insert uh, a little bit of uh, pencil and paper work. Maybe I'll look at some of the um, photographs that uh, we took today of some of the lion cubs. It's not lion cubs, tiger cubs, and uh, see if there's one that I can use to uh, uh, as a um, a reference. Essentially, I'll copy a copy a photograph, but I can use for that. Don't know, is it something you might like to see or not bother? Oh, I'm interesting to watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> okay, Eddie Fall Guy, have a good night. In fact, yeah, we're not far off. Once I once I finish this section, then I'm going to uh, uh, give up myself. I'm quite lucky. I work from home, so I'm about ten seconds away from uh, from my work. So I don't normally have to worry too much about getting up early.
So that's the that's the green, the shadowed grass, if you like, underneath the locomotive. So let's turn that over and take a look at it. Once you get good fear reaper maybe you'll be able to work from home and um, then um, you too don't have to get up quite so early <laughs> it's taken me quite a number of years to get to that stage so and Cagliati you, yeah well it's worth doing it now then you don't have to do it later and it's it, it, well it might not feel it it's easier to do it now to do the hard work now um, than when you get older and you've got so much else you want to do but uh, let me zoom this out. Okay, and now you can sort of um, sort of start to see shadow under the uh, under the locomotive. Um, let me see if I can tip this up because you're getting a foreshortening effect, which makes it look a little bit odd. So if I just tip it up like that, uh, that way got the camera reversed so let me zoom I can't zoom out anymore I've got to come backwards with that so there we go um, so now you start to see the shadow underneath so it, it ties the locomotive down to the ground rather than it floating um, I think it I think it looks a lot better and we'll put some you know more shadow on this side of the locomotive and then green grass around it um, before we do the sky so we've got a quite a fair bit done Probably with a bit of luck, may get most of the grass done uh, tomorrow night. Uh, no, I don't, um, Fear Reaper. Not familiar with that at all. I think maybe on the side of the... Um, the chimney instead of doing white on the side I maybe should have done a, a light grey but anyway it's done now I'm not going to pull it out um, so that's it for this evening I'm afraid guys it's now uh, quarter past ten so um, I've actually been streaming just over two hours so two hours stream I started a little bit late so what I do is say thank you everybody for watching um, thank you um, rain clouds and um, the McGuinness, if he's uh, still around, for uh, following earlier on uh, tonight. I will see if I can. Uh, okay. I may take a look uh, a bit later on, Fear Reaper. Um, I'll tell um, after the stream. I'll see if I can sort out why the sound wasn't playing. Um, Cause that way, I, I've I missed you guys uh, following, for which I apologise. So, um, <laughs> thank you very much for that rain clouds. What I'm going to say is uh, thank you again all for watching. If there is anybody else that's watching that's not following, then I of course encourage you to do so. Uh, if you just, however, like to be notified when I go live, um, rather than having Twitch do it, you are welcome to follow me on uh, Twitter. The details are below the stream window. They'll also be on the end plate in a moment, but it's simply at Zaraganart. And I tweet generally when I go live, or the odd art-related tweet, but nothing uh, particularly uh, uh, frequent, shall we say? What's the what was I saying? That's it. I I tweet when I go live, not when I have my breakfast. Um, on the other hand, if you'd just like to try and catch my next stream, I do stream subject to family events seven nights a week at the moment, from approximately eight p.m. in the UK. That's nineteen hundred hours GMT. Oh, whatever time zone you're in, take a look at the clock. You've got one on your computer screen, probably. Subtract about two and a quarter hours. And that would have been eight o'clock in the UK. By the time that was in your own time zone, that's eight o'clock in the UK. So that time tomorrow and subsequent evenings. With that, thank you all. Hope to see you again tomorrow and I'll run a future stream. Bye bye.